gang, 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 gang. We're back. It's a Monday Mac, and we are reviewing a brand new album. John, what's the album called? Josh drinking. It's called Only God Was Above Us by Vampire Weekend. Fantastic. Um, This is our first podcast in a long time because my house almost burnt down. Um, So it's good to be back. Um, We have a new, I don't even know if we discuss sometimes love on here. Um, I don't think, I don't think we did either. So this might delve into a little bit of other things too, but it is generally a Monday night. So sometimes love our new single, it's out everywhere. We even did a visualizer for it. Uh, with a lyric, with a lyric video, um, and it's been getting picked up in some places. It's on like thirty playlists, which is a lot, which is kind of fun. And um, Scoopski, shout out to Scoopski because they gave us the insight on uh, I forget what it's called it now, but uh, once I remember it, I'll say it out loud. But it's some website that uh, yeah. That- Really, it's really helping us. It's connecting us with a lot of different playlists. And there's like, you could pay for some extra stuff. So we got some reels. We're hoping to get this thing rolling. Here, but, look at um, us real quick. These guys at TJPL News wrote a really uh, cool article. Excellent article. We got a couple different articles, Neil. We do. Um, we do. Go on our Twitter. So if you go on, well, it's not Twitter anymore. Go on X, whatever the fuck you want to call it. At Macros Music, right? We're right there. Just go follow us. Yeah, so it's, it's such a simple concept. YouTube too. If you follow us here too. What are you doing? Subscribe, like. Yeah, if you're on here, you you may as well follow us. How many people use YouTube, John? Uh, like it has to be in the in the billions, right? I think like two billion and only two hundred follow. So we, you know. So, get, um, we got two two billion more to get. But yeah, sometimes love real quick. Go listen to it. Um, it's actually such an incredible fucking song. Yeah. And if you miss out on a song like this, it's nuts. It's nuts for anyone to miss out on a song like this. I mean, who knows? Beard so bigger. What? <laughs> no, my, my beard is my beard is smaller than your beard. Um, yeah, sometimes love is just magnanimous. It is large, big sounding. It's like the greatest Tom Petty song I didn't write. It's such a great fucking song. Yeah, I think it's go, really good. Go listen to it. I think we yeah. broke new ground with that one. Yeah, and we got a, we got a lot more coming. Hold on. The, what the fuck is your shirt say? The Purdy? Oh, uh, the Birdie Boy Relapse Tour. Oh. Shout out to uh, Brett Kreshner. Um, he's 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 my guy. I got an itchy shoulder. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of this new Vampire Weekend album called "Only God Was Above Us." Yeah, seriously, this is this is a great fucking album. But uh, the it's first very weird. I love it. I love it too. Ice cream piano. Yeah, ice cream piano. Um, I'll go first. I wrote uh, insane opener. Uh, fuck the, the fuck the world lyrics had me nervous because I was like, oh god, did he like lose touch? Yeah. Um, and then of course he didn't because the, the lyrics are just great because it's about how it's just like it, uh, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, it's a great song. Can you write something down? I did, but I had something just read what you wrote. I had something to say about the actual song that I didn't write down, but I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, lyrics are incredible. Guitars are awesome. Love. Yo, did you? Huh? Did you know there's a Japanese version with another fucking song? No. Called broken, broken washing machine. Huh. I wish we could do that. <laughs> I didn't know it. I just, I just was, I just did a quick uh, schmoogle, and it... we got to try ah. and fuck it. We'll, we'll She's not it. old or orthodox. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one. Uh, was the first, one? the first two lines in this song are: "She's not old or orthodox." I don't know why she called the cops. Yeah, 
<laughs> Back to ice cream piano. Yeah, though no, these these lyrics there's were so a bit much to, There's so much to hear in in every one of these songs, but this song too, I'm like hearing different things every time I listen. Uh, I'm giving it an eight point seven out of ten. Okay, ice cream piano for me. Yeah, the the um. This album is like such a classical album. I mean, there's a song on it called classical, but it's just like the, the piano flourishes are so great on this yeah. album. And this song is just so fucking fun. And it's only three minutes, three and a half minutes long, but it actually feels like a seven minute song. It's so dense. There's so much in it. It's a wild, uh, wild album opener. Yeah. The, the thing I give the outro is just nutty. Yeah, I give this I gave the song seven point nine out of ten. Show sure enough. <laughs> All right, next is classical. Matt, do you oh go? Oh my god! All right, this is my favorite song that's coming out this year so far. This is a ten out of ten for me. It it totally blows me away. The absolute jester like guitar riff that opens the song. Such a fun use of of octave guitars. Um, yeah. the the lyricism that ties into the song is called classical, and it's a classical song, in the sense of if you translated it to any language throughout any part of time, anyone that just understood anything can understand this song. So I was like, what a crazy song to put out! Yeah, in such a spastic Nickelodeon like manner. Well, you know what I mean? Not, maybe not Nickelodeon now. Maybe not Nickelodeon now. It's, networky. it's just like it's it's just like Yeah, it's not creepy enough. It was creepy if you Nickelode Nickelodeon. I watched that documentary. That documentary was nuts. I did um, not watch it. I don't I don't know. That kind of shit gets me upset. Like it gets me angry. I just like watch I just watched like every documentary. I love documentaries. I don't know. I do like a thumbs up and then a thumbs up thing pops up sometimes. But okay, class school's a ten out of ten. For me, every part of the song I love. I love the production. The drums are crazy the way they're panned left, and then you have separate drum loops coming in. You know, yeah. pan center, pan right, yeah, and then you really have cool. the double bass being played the whole entire song. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's just crazy. It's like a it has jazz elements, it has classical elements. The flourishes the piano. Those the dong ding dong ding. It's just crazy. Like it's so great. Um. Absolutely genius stuff. This was like an epic return to form for them, for me. Yeah. I think a lot of this is like, and I I do like Father of the Bride, but there a lot of this is going back to like their bread and butter, which is going extremely experimental in their own lane. You know what I mean? Yep. Like not like doing like you know they're not making like soul metal where every you know every instrument's a different soul. Like they're not being mm-hmm. silly with their experiments, but uh, I gave it a nine point eight. Uh, lyrics and melody are up there with my favorite of all time by them, and some of the, maybe ever. Like it's just incredible. Slide guitar is fantastic. The sax solo is just mm. sporadic and beautiful, and I love it. Nine point eight out of ten. Such a great song, John. Up next, we have Capricorn. You go first. Oh, this is a heavenly song. I love this song. I love that the lyrics are literally about the idea of someone being born like December 28th or 29th. And they only have three because they're they're the Capricorn sign. And they only have a couple days or weeks being a being like in their year. And then when the next year come, but it's also like a thing about like anybody that's just in the middle of things. It's just great. Fantastic. 9.5 out of 10. Oh, man. The song is just... um, I don't know. It's just like a whole different... It's like its own little world, this song. Yeah. I also love all the callbacks in every song. To all their like first four albums. They have callbacks to oh, like... Diane Young, yeah. Yeah, and then there's like 
later on, I think it's like one of the song like shouts out Mansard's Roof. Like it has the Mansard's yes. drum beat. It's, it's uh Connect, which is which is a Connect. Song. We'll talk about that next. Yeah, Connect is Connect is excellent. Um Capricorn for me is another ten out of ten. I just listen to it every day. I know all the words now. I love the strings are just incredible. Mm -hmm. Um it's very dignified yet working class at the same time. You know what I mean? Like it's it's um educated but accessible. So I really enjoy listening to it. And Ezra's lyricism is just like off the charts right now. He took less best lyrics best best uh, lyrics that have come out this year, for sure. He's taking the neck he always is super interesting to me as a songwriter because I, the, the way he ties in such classical elements and makes them so personal personal to like just a you know a one person you know what i mean it's he's taking like whole country wars in in a lot of songs and mm. pop, it's just it's just incredible man he's he's so, he's is he top 5 songwriters in my book ever maybe i don't know i mean Honestly, like modern vampires of the cities, and as an album could put him, yeah, in that category. Like as just him and Rostam, I guess, as a songwriting duo back then. But yeah, now that they're putting out songs like this, that Rostam's more removed from. It's like wow, but also you could really hear how great of a rhythm section Chris Bayo and the other dude is. He, he's he's. I mean, he might be the best drummer out right now. He's very. He's like so creative and he really plays for the song but he he does kind of only do like three or four things yeah but the, he, but the where he puts them is, is <laughs> a lot of the times the drums come out on of this nowhere. album Fuck. on this album there's a there was a lot of like threads running through his drum fills like towards like a couple of the songs at the end i'm like oh okay you used the same drum beat in an earlier song but it still worked for the song so it doesn't matter hmm. well i take it back so, now. <laughs> next no he's a fantastic drummer you're correct <laughs> okay. Okay. he's lovely in my book john oh what did you give Cap oh you gave capricorn 10 we're only on capricorn so we gotta start next next up connect all right it's uh connect so i kind of took this as like information overload type of shit you know what i mean lyrically like it's not a surprise i can't connect maybe kind of a shout out to some young, like a younger generation from Ezra. you know yeah. Um, I really liked this song. Um, I don't have as many defined opinions about it as I do like with Capricorn or really any of the four that they put out that I listen to more intimately. Yeah. Um, but Connect was a really cool one too. Um I would I gave Connect a se I the only thing I wrote down was my ratings. I gave Connect a seven out of ten. So we're we're in way different ballparks with this. I hate this numpkin. Uh it's fa it's like to me it's fantastic music like the musicality of it's just it's so all over the place and it's so intertwined and some things are so off time but on purpose that it almost uh, it's just um like the weird harmony pianos in it uh the bass is beautiful um the lyrics I like the lyrics a whole lot um chorus is fabulous I uh, like the nod to Mansard's roof. Uh, I gave it oh the nod to Mansard's roof. Oh yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, so good. So I gave it a nine. That's a super fair rating. Um, I feel like all my ratings for this whole album, besides the tens, I gave are going to go up the more I listen to the songs. But mm -hmm. these songs are so dense, you really have to listen. Uh, next up, we have oh, prep school there. gangsters. Um, I'll go first. This is again. a fantastic fucking song. Well, it, it, I, it's I think we flipped a little bit here, uh, because I said the first half is kind is a little weak to me. The boom, yeah, <laughs> good. It's really good, but no, it's it, baroque pop. It's a whole different genre. No, 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 no. I, I, I get it, but uh, I was just like, um. Oh, it's oh, it's no. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I got excited. There's a song later that I'm uh, super excited about. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think I know what song you're thinking about because I. I'm just really thrilled about one of them. Um, 
I said, but the especially compared to the first four songs, like the first half of this song, I was just like, okay. Uh, but then the second half, um, musically and his melodies and and where he chooses to put um things uh is just really like brings it back up um but it's still to me it, i think it's the lowest on the record and i gave it a 7.9 out of 10 really yeah all right so for me i fucking love the song i love the beginning i love the instrument the instrumentation um i feel like the way they wrote the song was everything that was played in the song was just played in a room in a straight line because it feels like it's just everything's panned across your ears. Like the panning's super cool. Ariel, like Rothschild or whatever his name is, is such a great producer. Oh, he's, um, he's something else. He's like a super. So, hero. like, I really thought the song was great. Um, love the melody, love the hot, love the just the octave melody. Dun, 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 dun. And having the low is great. Yeah. Um. And then the Glockenspiel. That's always nice, or whatever it was. I feel like I feel like uh, the Glockenspiel is really near and dear to our hearts. In any any song. Yeah. Any any. Oh, we love our Glocks. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we smack them Glocks. So yeah, for me, <laughs> the song is a eight point seven out of ten. I really like it. I think next up put, we have uh, real quick. I I get um, Ezra's extremely. I just like talented, but I just wish he went a little harder on uh, the actual prep school gangs, fake gangsters. Mm -hmm. You know, because because we I I know a couple of them, or I've met a couple of them, them kind of people, and yeah. like I just feel like he could have went a little harder on them, like saying how shitty they are. Even though I get the what he's trying to say, but I don't know. Um, all right, number six is the surfer. Um, I loved I, I loved the, this song. I love the uh, key setting. Um, the intro's great. It's very eight. There's a lot of very eighties hip hop. Um production i love the chorus the chorus is is beautiful the chords of the song are fantastic uh i think it's wonderful 8.8 .8 out of 10 uh the surfer uh i enjoyed this song tremendously i listened to this i think i listened to the album they all god was it three times or four times but uh the surfer i think i've listened to like five or six times now it's just a nice song. Like sometimes now, I like to listen to the music. Like the way I like to listen to music, it's just really simple. I just like to go. Do I? Does this sound nice to me right now? Like whether it's whatever genre it is, if it's classical, if it's anything. And like this album's kind of all over the place, and really, really great for that mentality. So the surfer, I gave the surfer an eight out of ten. Yeah, it's great. I'm really excited. I got. I'm excited to check out this extra song that I didn't know existed. Yeah, I'm gonna do that as soon as we're done. Um, Gen Z cops is Gen next. X cops. Oh, Gen X cops. <laughs> Gen My Z. My God, <laughs> they're not even old enough yet to have cops, John. <laughs> um, you go. You go first. Um, you know, honestly, this is my least favorite song on the album. I don't really care about it all too much. It's like kind of like Joy Division. It's not like too good, not too bad. It's kind of punk. It's fine. It's it's a nice album track, like six point five out of ten. Uh, the guitar did grow on me a lot. He, at first, I think we both said that we thought that it was just like, eh. but it grew on me a little bit just because it's it's kind of uh. Something they never really did before like that. You know what I mean? Maybe a couple things that I'm forgetting, but um, I always well, I will say I always appreciate shout out to Hudson. A lot of Hudson, a lot of modern vampires of the city production, like on the vocals. Yeah. Um, for for not just Hudson, there's like a little Yahe in there too. Oh yeah. Um yeah, I, I 
dish grew on me. It's not like it's not my one or two tier, but I think it's like an eight point I like a eight point one out of ten. Um yeah. You like that. Next up. Oh yeah. Sarah hey, Boone. God, I love this song. Um yeah, you can John, go. I'm gonna I'll go quick because you'll have more to say. Because you got it into all the story of it and all. I love the musicality of the song. It's super modern vampires of the city. Um, obviously, it has the Yahe choir, which is fantastic. But I absolutely love the fluttery 80s hip hop dance break chorus that reoccurs. That also has Ezra just shouting. Yeah. Which he just going, woo. Like he's just, it's fantastic. Like that's so much fun. It's such an exuberant, artful song. Um, the song's a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Uh, I think we gave it the same rating. I, I love this song. It really captures a nostalgic feeling. Um, and like a, I almost feel like the, there's so many different like storylines going in this song. Like Mary Boone herself was an art dealer in New York in the 80s and was like very important, I guess, to the art scene back then. Um, And now she's in jail for tax fraud. And so like there's a lot of like um, like uh, petty crime, crooked cop. Um, not on the street yet, but I was cooking like those kind of lyrics. Yeah. But also like, um, uh, Mary Boone, like I'm on the dark side of the room. I, mean, I hope you feel like loving someone soon. It's like, I've been sitting yeah. alone for so long and I just want someone to appreciate me. You know, he's like almost being the art. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's like, uh, you know. I don't have the lyrics in front of me, but it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 9.5 out of 10. I had Actually, slurp. No, this is a 9 point. What did I give this? I scribbled after. I think I gave it a 9.8 out of 10. It's a fantastic song. All right. Up next. I'm going to go first for this one again. One of my, I f- am thrilled about this next fucking song. Yeah. Pravda. Absolutely love it. Kwasa Kwasa guitar. I've been getting into Kwasa Kwasa. Like, I've just been listening to Kwasa Kwasa like when I drive to work. Like, the way I used to listen to Japanese jazz. Starting to get into Kwasa Kwasa. And it is just a lovely song. Like, the guitar work is so nice. The lyricism is so great. Just kind of punching up at at Russia, they always ask me about Pravda. It's just a Russian word for truth. Like, what a great lyric. Yeah. Well, Prav, Do you know what I mean? Pravda's their the Pravda's like their CNN, right? Or it's like Pravda's a, Pravda was is their main propaganda television station in Russia. Yeah. But the word Pravda in Russian is truth. Mm-hmm. That's what it means. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a play on words, like trust in the government, elites, yeah. Pravda. Like it's just such a great, I just think such that, a great song. It's very pleasant. The song's a nine out of ten for me. I loved all of it. I like the drums, uh, yeah. everything. It's just a beautiful song. So, um, Pravda, like 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 face value is that he's punching up at Russia, um, but I this is how I like to interpolate. Not interpolate, <laughs> interpret the song. I'm good. This is how I like to use the song in our work. Uh, shout it out like in our next song. Anyway, um, <laughs> I also <laughs> I also wrote it down as uh, Pravada. Oh, Pravada. That's the Dego. Yeah, the Dego word for truth. But uh, I I like to think of this song as if it was the point of view of truth like like just say truth was like kind of like god mm. about how um humanity will never get it right but truth mm. but truth is the person truth is so um 
they they so indifferent whether we'll figure it out or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I think of that the song. Um and also cool tidbit. I was listening to an interview about this song. Mm -hmm. And um Ezra said that he wrote it during the father of the bride sessions. So he was he's like this, you know, he's he's not thinking about he wasn't thinking about Ukraine Russia war when he wrote it. Mm -hmm. He said he was thinking about the Cold War because he was writing a song. He wrote a song for Liam Gallagher called Moscow Rules. And uh, and that's oh, out. Shit. It's out. It's out. Like, it's a really good song. And so uh, that's how I found out that he wrote a song for Liam. On his I got to listen to Moscow Rules. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's I, insane. I, I, I was so... Uh, I'm so pumped up about that. But the song is crazy. What I give? 9.5 out of 10. Love it. Everything about awesome it. Awesome song. Last up, John. You go first. Hope. Hope. Um, beautiful intro. Uh, the drums are, as always, perfect for the song. Um, the verses are neat, extremely well produced, and the lyrics are written. Uh, like they're great lyrics. Um, I think the breakdown in the middle is is fantastic. Uh, my critique, and I think you might agree, is that there's like maybe too too many um, breaks, like little piano breakdowns in between. Mm, yeah, going into the verse, because then I feel like when they get to that crazy breakdown, it means more if you don't have those. So mm -hmm. I actually don't think that was like, like I wouldn't, have, that's the first writing decision on the album where I'm like, I wouldn't have done it like that. Yeah, um, me neither. But who who am I? You know what I mean? He's, he's a, he's, he's, he's great. So, but that's my opinion. Um, But still, it's great. The outro is fantastic. It's a good uh, closure. Uh, I gave it an eight out of 10. Let's look. What? was my rating hope obviously love the piano love the drums love the production the whole product like the whole album is just like expertly crafted yeah um i took the song as like um just like a message to just be like yeah you gotta move on sometimes you know what i mean just mm -hmm. let go of things i was listening to on Joe Rogan. It was like a female psychiatrist, and she was saying like sometimes talking about your problems makes them worse because you talk about them all the time and you harp on them. Mm. There's like studies behind it and all that shit. From what she was saying, I don't know. I didn't read it, but you know, you know how that shit goes. I don't know. Um, Hope's a great song. I really, really enjoyed it. This is another song where I feel like the guy Ariel, whatever is like, what the fuck is this guy's last name? It's, isn't it Ro Rothschild or something like that? Reichstag. Ariel Reichstag, whatever his name is. But him and Ezra produced it together. So I'm like, this guy like kind of probably wrote some of this song. And you could just hear him like all over this whole entire album. Yeah. Like you can hear his stuff everywhere because he does all, all sorts of work with like Jack Antonoff and like, this guy works with fucking everybody. But, yeah, Hope, uh, I really like the lyrics in the song. Um, kind of felt a little political, too. I don't know if you kind of got that kind of vibe. I definitely did. So, I, I, I thought it was a lot good. of. There's a lot of double entendres in this. Is double entendre... That, that's not just like a... That, that's, I'm saying that right, right? There's a lot of like double. You know, I don't know, I don't know, but Google does the pronunciation thing. So let's see, double. No, no, no. I meant using it in the right sentence. Yeah, it's a phrase that has two interpretations. Oh uh, yeah, it's double. a double entendre. There's yeah, you. Lot, yeah, you said it right. A lot of double entendres that uh, about like, you know, 
the governments and all that shit. Man. Well, I live double under with these governments and stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm distracted. These, the, uh, these the, governments with the double entendres. The uh, champion, the basketball championships. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a <laughs> lot of double entendres with the government. Hold on one minute. It's March Madness. <laughs> well, well, everyone, that's been our review of well, wait. Vampire Weekends. Only God was above us. Hold on, I gave it a nine out of ten. By the way, album overall, hope, hope. album overall. I gave Hope an eight point eight out of ten. No, the album. Yeah, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> only, only God was above us. Yeah, I gave the album a nine point four out of ten. I think it's my favorite guitar work by them, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many different styles. Yeah. It's, it's just a really fun cool. album. Like, this, the tones are great. I think they're back. I, I didn't think they really left with Father of the Bride, but uh, I think now this this is a better album than that. I think they're they're on a, on a hot streak again. Um, yeah. And I think there's still some songs that'll grow on me a little bit more. And by the way, Rostam, did you hear Rostam's vocals in uh he did backing vocals in the surfer? And I think he has a production credit on her. Oh shit. Let me go uh double check. Da -da. The surfer. Yep, fantastic. Album. And one more. Yeah, Rostam. Hell of a record. Hell of a record, yeah. I gave it a 9.4. I thought it was fantastic. No, you can also say it's a 10 out of 10. Our new song, Sometimes Love Isn't All You Need. I think I think that's a, I think that's a great fucking song. It's the truth, everybody. It's the truth. Go listen to the music. Go listen to the words that John wrote down. And I didn't know I didn't actually write them. I typed them. Excuse me. I didn't know that you had a typist about. Mm -mm. All right, John. Um, That's are you going to start? Let me ask you a question because I know you got to get to the basketball games. But I think for your writing, it would be productive. It hasn't worked for me yet, but I switched to typewriter. You should too. What do you mean it hasn't worked for you yet? Like the songs aren't. Coming? Yep, that's why I that that's why I haven't written any songs ever. Get the type because I've been trying on typewriter this whole time, and I, I haven't figured out how to use a typewriter yet. Like none of the none of the keys make ink go to the to go to the thing. I think I think there is something. I I was just thinking about this. How yeah. I'm not a good songwriter. If I, Under duress. If I have a pen and pad. I don't like anything I've ever written on paper. Ever. I have to type it to be a good That's story. interesting. I don't, I don't know why. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I don't I don't understand why. Oh well everyone. It's another Monday Mac. John's house is still intact. Thank God. Thank God everyone's I'm safe and talking. sound. Under construction, things are moving along. Go listen to our new song, Sometimes Love Isn't All You Need. It's available on all platforms. Go listen to it now. Go enjoy it. You know what? Honestly, if you're in a really good mood, wait until you're in a bad mood. Then listen to it. It's a good, it's one of those, those to good it. songs. Listen to it whenever, man. Just, it's, just it's, put it on. It's a good with a soft pretzel, too. Ah. Uh. John, if you have a soft pretzel, you should listen to sometimes. Soft pretzel and water ice right now. That would be so oh, nice. Mango water ice. At Pops. Yep. Jump with the, the water ice. They have the water ice the two in the back, the one with the flies on them. <laughs> what? No, I'm just fucking I'm just messing around. You're talking shit on Pops. I'm talking shit on Pops. Yeah, I shouldn't talk shit on Pops. Yeah, Italiano's all the way, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm more of an Italiano's guy myself, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I, I actually, I'm a Pops guy. John, I remember, like, walking, like, up, like, 
what is it? What is uh, it's on Shunk or Porter? Italian is Italian is yeah. It's a uh, it's um it's like sixteenth and something. Twelfth and Porter, something, like something that. wherever it is. I haven't been there. So before. I'm walking by. There's like I remember there's like a line of like nine people. They're all adults. It's like late at night. This is like when me and Josh were just walking around South Philly. I'm like, damn. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah. people really wanted their fucking Italianos. Italianos is great. Uh, but I think Pops... See, Pops is like a, a good mix between Rita's and Italianos. You know what I mean? Like, it has more of the that truth. candy flavor. Like, it's their sweeter flavor. But Italianos, if you want a classic water rice, that's the place. And Pops for your every other need is your where you go for that. Soft pretzel with your Sundays. All right, thanks. I for listen. I'm gonna be real. Love. Go listen to sometimes love. And you, everybody, take care of yourselves now. You hear? Don't go outside with a wet head, or you'll catch pneumonia. Okay. <laughs>